Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who are unaware, um, a while back I started doing a Conan um, chronology. I was trying to make sense of the um, happenstance and the just randomness of Robert E. Howard's Conan Tales. And if you remember, I can't remember what the video is called, but I did a video the second I realized that nothing made sense. And I was just freaking mortified. I was so upset. And um, what have you, whatever. Then, um, I was still doing the Conan videos, but I was like a little crestfallen. <sighs> and now we come to the part of the story where I am just livid about it. Not livid about it. I'm just, um, nothing seems to make sense. So, um, the problem is, um, well, we'll just say the problem is the devil and iron. Um, I think out of all the stories, um, this is where things go awry, we'll say. As far as a coherent through line. Now, I know some of you will be going, oh, but in the Lancer and Ace books, like, there's a through line and it makes sense. And da -da 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 -da. it makes sense because El Sprague de Camp uh, mainly, and also Lynn Carter, tried to make sense of this and they did a pretty good job i don't care for all the choices they made but they did a good job um and now in our travels we have shown up at the devil and iron now the devil and iron um takes place Basically, on the remote island of Zippur. Zippur, with an X. Now, <clears throat> I was trying to come up with the name of this, because I always say it wrong. Um, the Vialaisi, or the... Via Yet Sea, which is probably the Caspian Sea. Um, every time we come here, there are fucking problems, okay? There are problems in the chronology. It's almost as if Robert E. Howard is like, oh, well, if something happens near the Via Yet Sea, it doesn't matter. Um, if you remember, this C right here is where we hit when we did um, uh, Shadows in the Moonlight or um, Iron Shadows in the Moon or something like that. Um, there is an island um, a bit north of where we are in Zippur. I will probably try to put a map um, so we can figure this out. But basically, um, to the west of this sea is the um, the region of Tehran, and um, to the east we would go to Katai, and to the south to Vendeha. Um, so, there, there's a little bit of information for you. 
And I will get to why this doesn't make any sense in a bit. So, <clears throat> like every Conan story <clears throat> that drives me crazy, um, out of this um, six-chapter novelette, um, the first, uh, what, two chapters? Is it the first two chapters or the first three chapters? I think it is the first three chapters. Don't even have Conan in it. So that pisses me off right away. But if you are into world, world, world building, if you're into world building, um, this would be really, really cool for you. If you are into um, how deep Robert E. Howard gets with the lore of the Hyborian Age, you'll dig this. If you just dig Conan, um, you might find that there's a lot to be desired here. <clears throat> so, the story starts off with a fisherman going to Zippur, and there's this crumbled ruins of an ancient city that um, millennia ago was a very big deal. And then um, a thunderbolt from the heavens hit this dome uh, tomb. And the fisherman goes in and he sees a um, giant body with the most beautiful dagger laying on its chest. And the fisherman's like, ooh, that dagger's better than my dagger. I'm going to get that dagger. And he picks up the dagger. And as he picks up the dagger, the um, what we come to find is an iron giant. Not like the movie, guys. But um, he looks a lot like Conan, but is iron. And he jumps up, and the guy gets scared, so he tries to stab him. But because he's made out of iron, um, his puny little knife breaks and the, this iron giant um, strangles him and kills him. Yeah. Then we go to um, oh, what, what's the name? We, we um, hear from the evil governor of Turan. Um, Jangir Aga Agha I'll just call him Agha, because that's easier for me. Um, him and his people are, are like the strongest nation in Hyboria, and people from um, countries or regions all over Hyboria um, like give them money because they're so hardcore and all this shit. But this damn band of Kazakhs or nomads are kind of getting the best of them and man if it wasn't for their damn leader this conan of samaria the barbarian um tehran would be able to just wipe these damn kazakhs off the face of the earth so they try to devise a plan this plan is so fucking stupid. Um, it's a wonder that these people are able to rule the underwear they put on, let alone a country. They say, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll have a parlay, a peaceful parlay, and have this hot number, Octavia, a voluptuous blonde throw herself at Conan and then try to escape and she'll go to this weird little island called Zapur in the Vililit Sea and um, will tell Conan that that's where she is and he'll go rescue her alone because you don't bring all your friends to go bang some chicks so and then when he's there we'll kill him um, 
so so this is the plan of the evil governor of Tehran. So when Octavia hears this, she's like, um, actually, I'm not comfortable with this plan. Um, I'm not a piece of meat that you throw around to let everyone have their way with. And they're like, oh, okay, let's have this um, horrendous, ugly torturer guy have his way with you until you decide you want to do what we're going to say. And she's like, oh, my God, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Um, and so that's that chapter. And then in the next chapter, um, she's swimming across the sea, climbing up the steps of this island and um i'm trying to remember exactly how this went because if you're familiar with the i'll sprig the camp version of this and i believe it's in conan the wanderer um the sequence of events in that version is a little different than the robert e howard del rey version <clears throat> and as much as I don't like how long it takes for Conan to show up in this story, I almost prefer the Howard version better than the DeCamp version because the DeCamp version seems to go like this, and I don't think it needs to. Um, but let me know down below which one you prefer better. Um, I, I would be interested to have that conversation because I, I just... I haven't decided, but anyway, <clears throat> so she's like having like thoughts about like how this went down and how she saw Conan and he smiled at her and it made her blush and all this other crap. And it's just fucking stupid. And then she like gets up and she sees this like city place. She hears something behind her and then she gets nabbed. Okay. So whatever she's nabbed. Now the next part. Conan, like a dummy, hears about this, so he rows a boat over to um, Zippur, the island of Zippur. And um, Aga, Agha, um, and all his men are in the reeds. And they're like, oh, let's get him now. And um, Agha is like, you fool. Um, don't let him know we're here and, uh, we'll just, we'll, let's wait until he's on the island and then we'll really get him and he'll be like, uh, so then Conan gets to the island, he's going up the steps and he notices that all the ruins that were there are now built up in these weird green, like fortress. It's just like the city's put back together and he's like, what the hell is this? And um, he's about to just say, you know what? This doesn't feel right. Screw it. I'm out. And then he sees a part of um, Octavia's um, loincloth or whatever on a bush. And he smells it like a pervert and knows that she's there. And so, um, and, and by now all this is happening, this is like chapter four. Okay. In a six chapter story, Conan just shows up. Okay, so he goes in and not only are all of the, like, the, not only that the city's put back together, but the inhabitants of the city from thousands of years ago are back. And um, Conan runs into some chick who obviously wants to do him, and um, she can't remember... Like, what happened yesterday? She thought she was killed, but that can't be right because she's there now and um, her loins are burning for the Conan. And um, then she passes out because she's so sleepy. And um, whatever. And then oh, some other things happen. And this part's actually cool where he's, like, running through the um, place and, like, trying to find shit there's like some mysteries happening where conan's not unsure of what's going on um and then he sees um Chekhov's gun for the story a giant um snake coiled on a, a gold throne and he thought it was like 
just like a statue or something and then he touches it and he's like oh no this thing's alive holy shit this big giant ass fucking snake coiled up nope nope no thank you <clears throat> so then he leaves that room but something that happens here clunky storytelling that um howard kind of relies on a little too much and um just because he's done it before he does this thing where Conan's like asleep and has a dream um, of like the last like 5,000 years on Zippur. And so now he knows everything because he dreamt it. So, yay. Clunky. Um, he hears uh, the Iron Giant guy whose name is... Uh, Kostral Kel. And um, that's two words. Kostral and Kel. Um, but when I was saying it fast, Kostrakel, I'm like, oh, Raquel. Okay, we'll just call this guy Auntie Raquel. So I was calling him Auntie Raquel the whole um, story. So Auntie Raquel is this big, giant fucking dude made out of iron. Okay. He's kind of like a god that has been walking on Earth. And um, that's the thing. And he's made out of iron. His skin is iron. And so Conan sees him and he sees um, the beautiful Octavia. And so Conan swings his sword at this dude and um, kind of hits him in the belly. And it chips his scimitar. Which, again, is weird, because Conan usually doesn't have a scimitar. And also, Conan doesn't usually wear a open white shirt like fucking Fabio. Like, um, there's a lot of weirdness in this story, okay? <clears throat> so, Conan's like, oh, dude, this guy is going to kill me. Um, I should throw this bench at him. And the bench shatters, and he doesn't move. And so Conan's like, oh, all of this is going tits up. And so he grabs Octavia and they take off running. Um, Auntie Raquel's chasing them. They go up to this um, dome all day long, quiet. I start doing this and the dogs start having a party outside. And some douchebags riding a motorcycle right under my window. Um, so anyway... And, and, and they like to rev, so all the car alarms go off up and down the street because they think that's cute and clever. Um, so anyhow, he's in the dome area, <clears throat> and he starts remembering, like, oh, yeah, there's the whole thing with the knife. If I could get that knife and set it on his chest like they did before, he'll go to sleep. Because that's how the fisherman woke this dude up and the whole thing started going um, sideways anyway. So that's cool, right? They lock the door and this is some awesome Conan shit where the chick's freaking out and she's like, are you going to kill him and stuff? And he's like, oh no, like I'm not going to be able to do that. And she's like, oh, well, what are we going to do? And he's like, well, he'll break through this door eventually and I will fight him because that's what I do. And I will die. But if while we're fighting, you run down the stairs, I have a boat and you could get on the boat and take off. And so Conan's totally cool. Now, while this is going on, um, Agha and all his men are still waiting um, in the reeds and they're like, dude, it's been an hour. What the fuck is taking this guy so long? And then he's like, well, maybe we should go over there and try to ambush him like over on the Island. You know, that might be easier. Let's go ahead and do that. So they go over there, all these troops. And so while they're there, they hear like, um, what the book says, um, they think a parrot flew overhead and whatever this thing was, went and told um, Auntie Raquel that there were a bunch of dudes coming. So Auntie Raquel leaves the door and runs down the stairs, and Conan's like, oh, he took off. Oh, my God. Well, shit, I, I think that dagger was in that room with the big snake. So if I go into that room, I could get the dagger 
and we could kill this fucker and everything will be great. So he tells the chick, again, like, go get in my boat, get the fuck out of here, and I'll meet up with you later if this all works out or whatnot. He goes in the room. He's above the um, throne. He's reaching for this dagger, and um, Octavia runs in. She's like, oh, my God, I was so scared. I didn't know what to do without you. Holy shit, that's a big fucking snake. And she wakes the snake up. And so the snake's going for her. Conan can't have that. So he jumps down and he's like, ah, and the snake in midair hears him and then like turns and goes for him and starts wrapping around him as it's uncoiling from the throne. And um, it starts squeezing the bejeebus out of him and it's squeezing so hard. Conan can't get a good like arm up to like swing down. And, um, you know, he can't do it, but then he can. And then he does it and chops the snake in half. Gets the dagger. They start running downstairs. And they can see um, Auntie Raquel just fucking laying waste to all this Tyrannian scum. Am I right? And then, um, aha, hid in the bushes because his men were getting all fucked up. And then sees Conan. And he's like, oh, yeah. I was here to kill this guy. I'm going to go kill him. And he shoots an arrow at him and Conan just like moves out of the way. Like all. And the arrow goes by and he's like, you dog, you think you can kill me with an arrow and does his whole fucking thing. And, um, then he fucks him up real quick and kills him. And Octavia's like, Oh my God, she, he just killed that dude. Oh man. And then the um, Auntie Raquel comes out because he knew that someone had gotten away. And then Auntie Raquel sees Conan again and is all pissed and wants to kill Conan. And so now that Conan has this dagger, he's like, oh, yeah, I can kill this guy now. So he puts his scimitar back and pulls out this dagger and starts just fucking slicing into this motherfucker like crazy. Like, he's fucking carving a turkey and shit. And the guy keeps swinging his massive arms, and Conan just, like, dodges it like he's fucking Jackie Chan and shit, and he's just, like, cutting this motherfucker up. So then the motherfucker's all cut up, and since he's all cut up, all of the battlements and inhabitants of the city vanish, and um, Auntie Raquel, like, dissolves into this primordial ooze. And then he goes up to Octavia and he's like, okay, so are we going to split or what? And she's like, you, th well, uh, and he's like, hey, like, why didn't you leave? And she's like, well, I couldn't leave you, but uh, I, I had nowhere to go. Like, shit, like, what's the use in lying? Um, I'm a slave. And if I go there, um, they're just going to put me in slavery again. If I go this way, pirates will find me. So uh, I just, I just didn't know what to do. And he's like, um, so you want to go back with the Kazakhs? Because apparently Conan's John Wayne now and talks like that. Um, and, you know, she's like, yeah, you know, no, like, gross. I didn't like you. This was all a sham. And and so Conan, like, forces his love on her. And um, the, the passion of his kiss makes her succumb. And um, then she's like, okay. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. And um, that's the devil in iron. Um, it's kind of a weird story. Now, the reason why I don't know what to do with this story is because in the beginning of the um, Shadows in the Moonlight, Conan's in the reeds. And he um, sees this dude who just, like, laid waste to all of his troops. And I believe it was the Kazakh troops that Conan was leading. So, if that is the case, then this story, The Devil in Iron, takes place before any of this. Because this is when Turan is trying to get rid of the Kha'Zix, and kill Conan. 
The problem with this is, is that in this story, The Devil in Iron, Conan brings up the Black Lotus um, and the inhabitants of Zethul, where the Slytherin Shadow took place, <clears throat> which happens before The Devil in Iron, obviously, but also happens after Shadows in the Moonlight. But because of the situation Conan's in as the head of the Kha'zix, and this is before Turan defeats him, this would have to happen before Shadow in the Moonlight. But Shadows in the Moonlight happens before Zuthal of the Dusk or the Slithering Shadow. Do you understand what's happening here? Do you see why I'm so upset and so confused? So, um... This is just, like, come on, Robert E. Howard. I know you had a notebook full of notes. <sighs> so anyway, and then a lot of people, um, according to this article I'm reading right now, a lot of people look down on this story because there are too many similar elements. Meaning an iron giant and the devil in iron. And the Iron Giants in Iron Shadows in the Moon. Or Shadows in the Moonlight. Um, in Shadows in the Moonlight, he was wrestling with some crazy um, ape-like creature. And in this story, it's a giant snake. Um, and in that story, the Red Brotherhood shows up. And in this one, it is the uh, um, Aghaz men from Turan. So, I don't know. Like, it's um, Cyclopean ruins, damsels in distresses, and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, so this is not one of my favorite Conan stories. But when Conan shows up, like, I seriously, like, if you have to... If you, if you have to do, like, chapters and chapters in a short story or novella or novelette or whatever, chapters and chapters of exposition to explain the situation we're about to be in, um, maybe that's a little too much. Because, like, with The Slithering Shadow or um, The Maneaters of Zambula, you know, like Conan shows up and finds stuff out, you know, that's a great way to tell the story. Like Conan shows up and finds stuff out as the readers do. Um, but I understand like, because this was supposed to be like a plot to capture Conan or kill Conan that we, the readers would know more than Conan does. But, and then the whole thing where Conan like, discovers everything through a dream of what's going to happen. This was done much better in, um, what do you call it? Uh, Queen of the Black Coast. It, it, that, it was a, a fever dream from the Black Lotus, whatever, um, but it made sense, and it worked. I didn't really love it there, but it worked. But, like, Robert E. Howard is so hooked on, I need world building to be the biggest thing here. And I need you reading this to know that I did my research and I know everything that happened in the last 10,000 years in this place. That's more important to him than knowing what the fuck has happened in Conan's life over the last two weeks. Okay? He can't keep this straight. And that is so annoying. He can tell you what happened 10,000 years ago on a Tuesday, but can't tell you what story takes place first without contradicting himself. It's like, Robert E. Howard, what the hell is going on? But um, all of the, like, the fight scenes and everything, they're really good. They're kind of anticlimactic, especially, like, the thing with the snake, like, Oh, his arm was out and he couldn't swing. He couldn't get a good swing. He couldn't get... Oh, but then he got a good swing. Oh. You know, like, 
Okay. Um, you know, so this isn't one of my favorite stories by any stretch of the imagination. If this is one of your favorite Conan stories, um, let me know down below. Uh, make a case for it. Let me know why. Um, but yeah, uh, so the Devil and Iron. And next time... Shit, I can't remember which one I'm supposed to do next. Oh, I had it just a second ago. I think it's People of the Black Circle. Which, again, I think is out of order. Because I believe he needs to be back on the West Coast for this story. I'm almost 100% positive he's supposed to be on the West Coast for this story. So, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Um, Robert E. Howard left us with a great character who did amazing things. So, l let's, not, let's not throw stones, okay? So, anyway. So, that was the Devil and Iron. Um, run over to Patreon. Hit me up on there. Oh, dude, I have so many updates. I'll do an update video tomorrow and tell you guys all about it. Because um, there's some cool... There's some cool pipes in the poop line, okay? So I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.